All right, here we are today at Titan Machine Tool. What are we working on today? We're making a lifter cam, more than one, two of them actually. Made out of 440C stainless steel. Then we're gonna send them the heat treat. We're gonna get them up to like, I don't know, 56 Rockwell or something like that. But anyways, this is what we got. We start with this right here. We start with a square piece of material that's been ground on two surfaces, milled all around, nice and square. This way when we do more than one of them, I have a fixture, I can keep loading them. I can just load them, bank them against the dowels, screw them to them, screw it to the fixture, tighten it down, and then I can run more than one without having to worry about, because we work off the center line of this thing, so they're all the same length. When we start with them like this, the two holes are uh, equally distanced off the center line. Clearance for a five millimeter socket head cap screw. So it's not tight enough to use. I mean, it probably is tight enough to locate off of, but I want better consistency. I want my process in control, if you know what I mean. So this way they're all the same length that we can bank off of one of the corners right there. And I uh, use that as a reference and run one after another and just load and unload the fixture. So this is what we got. I don't know how this is gonna work out here. You know how it is when I do these videos with one hand. So this one's already been done. We cut them 3 8 solid carbide end mill, a couple rough and passes, and then we finish cut it. Ordinarily, I don't like roughing and finishing with the same tool, but in this case, once I cut my corner off that I bank off of, I really can't take the pot off, take, take it back out and locate it real easily. So I just rough and finish all in the same process. I go nice and easy, take it easy, don't like to beat my tools up. I like to run it so that uh, I can walk away from it if I have to and not worry about catastrophe. You know, you leave it unattended for uh, 25 seconds, you're cooling and can't get to the tool because it's all loaded up with chips and what do you got? Krakatoa, boom. So I don't like to go there. But anyways, there's my setup. It's on a plate. I made those little clamps. I use them all the time for different setups. Clamp that baby down. Put it on the fixture, bank it against the dowels. I use the five millimeter socket head cap screws to hold it down so that it doesn't move. And then I put my clamps on it. I put the screws to her and clamp that bad boy down. I'll snap the shank off the tool and knock the head out of square before that part moves with, the, with all that clamping power on it. But I don't want it moving. Do not want it to move. So anyways, that's what we got. I'm gonna change the part out now. We did this one already here. Let's take these clamps off. Like I said, working one-handed. It's a pain. But I do it for you guys, because I love you. It's gonna be a little boring here. Anyways, we'll take these clamps off. These clamps are great. They're just cold rolled steel, 3 8 thick. They made to be used with quarter inch screws. Got a 1032 screw on the back end, so that's the back end jack to hold the back of the clamp up. Adjust it for the height of the material. They're pretty robust, you know? You can put some, you can put some pressure on that, clamping that thing down. It's not gonna flex. So I'll take the five millimeters out now. It's certainly overkill, but She's not gonna move. Like I said, I'll snap the shank on the tool and move, knock the head out of square before this part's moving. All right, so that's what we got right there. All right, so I bank, I bank the block up against these two dowels this way, and the front corner hits this one right there. Working on the center line. So I don't know, what's the part? Say the part's six inches long, it's not, but we'll say it's six inches long. From the center line, the edge of this dowel is three inches from the center line. So when I bank it up against it and bank it up again, put the screws in, they're all gonna repeat every time. You can run one after another after another. Like I said, when I make that rough and pass and I take this corner out, I can't take the part back out and relocate it. So I rough and finish all in the same operation. So let's get the next one. 
So I'm gonna put that on there like that. One hand working here, so put it on the plate, push it up against the back dowels, and then I bring it up against this one right here. Dink! Right there, just like that. So it's nested. Put my screws back in. So ordinarily, I like to, I like to try to hold it up against my stops. That's what these dowels are. These dowels are acting as my stops to at least tighten one screw, anyway. So we're pushing back. We're pushing to the right. But now I need the other hand. So sorry for this. Sorry, people. All right, I got one screw tight. We can come back to, come back to the view. The view. Oh God, please, God help us. I didn't mean to say that. All right, so now these guys are tight, tight enough anyways for what they're doing. They're just holding it in place until I put my other clamp -a -roos on here. So I got tapped holes right in that plate back there. So I can screw these clamps right into the plate. Boom, one quarter 20 hole, two quarter 20 holes, three quarter 20 holes, one quarter inch dowel, two quarter inch dowels, creating a straight line back here. And then there's my other one, my side stop. All right, so we'll put the clamps back on. If I had good video editing, I'd speed all of this up, but it's not my thing. Now, if I was clamping on plastic or aluminum, I would put a piece of paper or a piece of shim stock in there and not clamp right on it because you don't want to damage the surface and leave evidence that you clamp clamp down really tight on something. But this is 440C, this is pretty tough stuff. So I'm not too worried about these little, little pinch clamps leaving any telltale marks of being held down, even though I sock them pretty tight. Fast forward. All right, so now we're gonna sock these guys down, put the screws to her. Now this is probably overkill. It is overkill, not probably, but it is absolutely overkill. Like I said, I don't want it moving. All right. So we'll start it up and I'll, and I'll show you what I got running here, but we're not gonna watch this whole thing because it takes forever. I go very slow. Take it easy. Take it easy on me, you know? That's what my tool's asking me to do. Take it easy on me. So I only go a quarter inch at a time. Well, two, 220. Pot's 630 thick, so 220, 220, 220. That puts me at 660. Then I'm down into the plate a little bit. But here we go. First pass. Like I said, we're not gonna watch this whole process. It's gonna take forever. Yeah, right, here we go. We're moving at an inch and a half a minute. It's about a thousand RPMs. Solid carbide end mill, three eighths diameter. She's tired already. She's got a lot of mileage, but still cuts. Make some noise. I've been doing this for quite a while, but it still amazes me that as tough as that material is, this tool just cuts right through it. Now, it could be a little more aggressive, but as you can see, my chips, nothing's changing color. That would be bad for 40C. We'll work hard in this baby while we're cutting it. And then we're really gonna test the carbide if it gets hard. Let his chips. Got a little vibration. The last one I did vibrated in the same exact spot as well. I don't know why, but there it is. Keep on cutting. It's actually more in the more in the head of my machine. See? Oh, look at that. I touched the machine and everything 
goes out of focus. So I think it's more in the head of the machine than it's in the tool, but vibration like that, tool doesn't like that, boy. The more rigid the spindle is, the less vibration, the lot longer the tool will last you. Vibration is going to cause it to wear out much sooner. All right, so we're already over 10 minutes here on this video. This thing will take, it's gonna take quite a while to run. But it'll take a couple rough passes, semi-finish, finish passes, and then we end up with this guy right there. That's what it looks like. We'll take it over to the deburring wheel. We'll deburr it, nice smooth, soft edges. And that's that right there, so 11 minutes. Signing off, Titan Machine Tool, machining 440C stainless steel today. Check you out later.